Oh, Brother Anthony. Yeah, Brother Brad. I can see how so I'm wearing my Persian thing today. Get my, oh, I also got a Persian waistcoat here. Y'all call it waistcoat. We, we call it vest. But I guess you call it West Coast, because mm -hmm. the formal colonial, whatever the English they they call it West Coast. I mean, you know, this reminds me a lot of things we do. I mean, the what we all do is from this colonial legacy, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking, I'm not just thinking, I was thinking. There's been a uh, there was a, a big old hoo ha protest, or something not protest. There was a uh, they, they, you know, the, the recent elections, they got some party in, and they and they they they, they want some sort of some sort of provincial thing. They stormed this provincial legislative parliament, whatever, and they're part of it. But they they broke windows and everything like that, and it was pretty well, I say, disruptive. And you know, I'm like, wait a second, I thought this was a leadership. Are they supposed to be, you know? Well, anyway, mm. but that brought me to mind something that happened. I saw the last year. At a love damn college, you know, love their college over there, or yeah. someplace, you know, that that way, yeah. Mm -hmm. Love their college. You know, I was invited to this, they was doing this art, big art thing, you know, because I'm a cultural kind of guy, you know, because mm -hmm. as art, arts director, that's, that's a culture, you know. And so I was there, and you know, they, they started the program, you know, and, and, and then the kids and the people had worked all week or a bunch of weeks on this program, and you know, sort of preacher preached, and then all of a sudden, after you finished preaching, the kids started jumping up and protesting your toy toy, you know. I'm going like, wow, it's carrying on for a while, and it's back and forth, back and forth. So now, I, you know, I can't hold myself sometimes, you know, so I, I, I tried to address the students. I said, look, well, well, why don't you let the, this program is in sections, you know, let the section go, and then toy toy between sections. And they go, no, you don't understand, brother. The, the toy toy, we're supposed to disrupt. And I'm going like, oh. Well, but that was all right in the bad old days when you had to disrupt, but now you the ones, you know, well, I didn't really understand it personally, but I, there's nothing I could do, you know. I'm, I'm just an audience guest there, you know, so, okay. so it didn't happen, you know. Everybody all the work done, the work, whatever. Then, I, then I was thinking, just, just the other day here on campus, the students were protesting because they didn't get the bursary or money or something they didn't get, you know, so they boycott classes. And I, I was thinking, you know, if I was a student or school leader or something like that, what would I do? Here's what I would do if I would have a voice, you know. Now I'm a student, but I'm a research student, so I don't have to, well, I should, but anyway, I'm not involved with that part. Um, here's what I do. I, I, I said, look, we all going to go to class, but we're going to just open our books and start studying on our own like that. And when the instructor or, you know, the, or the, the, the lecturer or the professor gets up there and speaks, with, with all due respect, sir, you know, we're, we're really trying to study. It's hard for us because we don't have that money. And uh, so we can't, you know, you shouldn't be teaching. You shouldn't, could you go over to the people there and, and ask them, you know, because it's your paycheck that we're paying for here. So, you know, you go and you do your thing, but you can't teach us right now because we, we you know. Now, immediately, what would happen is, you know, they would show that they like serious students, you know, and they would show like, uh, well, they would show they're serious students, and we'd be a different kind of protest, and people would have to start thinking, hey, you know. So, but, but those those are two or three examples, you know, I'm thinking, but I got another example of a different kind of protest. Now, this, this is very interesting. I'm going to get around my bag here. And, uh, brother, could you just hold this for a second now? Let's see, okay. Now, I can't now, you know, I work with a couple of, you know, groups, you know, uh, uh, one out at the uh, village school here, and it's my research group, and then there's another group that are researching um, out of uh, Denbasa, you know, the really poor, poorest township, one of the poorest townships in the poorest province, and, you know, in all of South Africa. But they came up with an idea where they gonna make a petition. Now normally when you make a petition, you, you had your little points and then you sign a bottle of a petition like that. You know, they had like 29 points. So what they did is they they put it into different, you know, they put it into different different things here, you know. They put it's like on five sheets, you know. But normally you know what happened. Somebody gets a petition, they read a petition, you don't know where it goes, and then you know, they go like <laughs> like that. This guy, what they're saying, they put on, you sign your name on the back of the petition, right? Like that. 
And now, now here's what they have. They have your, your clan name, your surname, your given name, your birth, and then you put your sign and your signature there. Now they also have a separate sheet that they collect you known for the called database. You know, where they have the name, the contact number, and your email and, and your municipality where you come from. You know, so that's that's a good idea. They don't think. But this is what they want to hand in. Now you're going to ask, well, what's this? I never seen this thing about the clan name, much less a petition where you you have the thing on the front, you sign on the back of the clan name. What's that? Well, we're in Southern Africa. That means everybody's part of a clan. Oh, I can take that. Now, brother. Well, now, this means if you have a clan name, like for instance, you of the Bele clan, that means you got a chief. Now, you, if, the, if, if they see a bunch of Bele clan members, you know, or, you know, family on there, then they just go to the chief and say, hey, chief, a bunch of the Bele clan agrees with this thing. Mm -hmm. So now the chief, he got to go, and, and, you know, he got to go knock on the door for the for the, whoever they sent the dick to and say, hey, my people want this. And you go like, and they get somebody, that means they got a response from another another area, you know? But more importantly, what I'm, what, what I'm thinking about this, which is really kind of interesting, is not only is it unique and different, but it comes from, you know, the people. It comes from the, you know, because when I, when I was in Lower East Side, what we was doing this whole, uh, uh, I say, uh, in 1984, they was running for president. Jesse Jackson was running for president, and so uh, a bunch of people was trying to get signatures for him to be on the ballot, whatever have you. And I was hanging out with the J. J. Ren and whatever Jones Club there in Harlem. You know, I guess we all the big uh, politicians like Adam Clayton Powell Jr. and you know all those people like Basil Patterson, all they come from. And one of the people said that they said, you know, the, the signal of a good leader is that they they see where the crowd is going and they jump in front of them. You know. Uh, didn't make no sense to me at that time, but, but uh, that's what the guy said, you know. But I'm going like, nah, a good leader knows what leadership is. I mean, that's what I'm saying now. Back then, I didn't know what to say, you know. So that's what I'm talking about. You know, these kids are leading themselves. And they, they don't need, you know, nobody to tell them to toy, toy, disrupt, or whatever have you, because that's for another era. That's inherited from the colonial people. That, that's that's what. Now here's the other thing about that clan name thing, which is kind of really interesting. Was really smart. You know, there's a there's a word called autochthonous. Now autochthonous, I learned that from from Professor Robert Shell over there at Stellenbosch University. Mm -hmm. And no, it means it means coming from the land, that particular land. Now that's a different word than indigenous or, or native or something like that. So no, it's just leadership. It's, 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 so in other words, if you sign that thing, and, and you can you can tell who's autochthonous to the area, rather than somebody just here just hanging out or just a settler or a colonialist or something like that. So this kind of petition, they're, they're, they're doing a bunch of things at one time, you know. And I, I admire that. I mean, as an audio dramatist, this is high drama to me. I want this in my research group. I get to see what they're going to do. What this is going to go to. I'm fortunate. That's right. But anyway, this is one of those dispatches from the arts director murder. So oh, that would be me, T. Funda Patterson, taking a train to Tibet, letting you know if it, well, what I only suspect. Mm.